Hello, welcome to the inside of the new Ford Ranger Wildtrak V6 and welcome to the inside of the Atlantis Dunes. My name is Chira De Siena. This is the Cars of Cozy YouTube channel and I know you've waited a while for this, but here's a review of the brand new Ford Ranger. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Get insurance that pays out faster than the word Archie. Budget, the official insurer of good South Africans. Now I hate wearing my sunglasses when I'm talking to camera. I feel like we should be making eye contact, but it is horrendously bright out here. It's like driving around in the snow. In fact, interesting fact, they actually do film snow scenes here in Atlanta. So then they just tweak the color in post-production and it looks like they're out in the snow. That's how bright it is. So if you don't mind, I shall be wearing my sunglasses. Right, the new Ford Ranger Wildtrak. How much does it cost? 953,000 Rand, which interestingly is about 140,000 Rand less than the top of the range Raptor. In here, you get a three liter diesel V6. In the Raptor, you get a three liter petrol V6. Interestingly, this has slightly more torque than the Raptor, 600 Newton meters. Not much, the Raptor's at 583, but obviously because it's a diesel, not nearly as much power, you've got 184 kilowatts in here. But still, let's be honest, there's not much to touch this in the Bucky world. Yes, the clone of this car, the Amarok, will have the same diesel engine, and so you'll be able to get a diesel V6 Amarok, but that is pretty much it in the world of Bucky's. There's, there's nothing else. There's only really two liters out there. But the thing is, look at the rest of the market. Where do you get a V6 diesel? You don't. Toyota doesn't offer one, Nissan doesn't offer one, no one offers them. Everyone's gone back to four-cylinder turbo diesels. So this is a bit of a rarity in the Bucky world. And I do think that that makes it stand out. I do think it makes it very appealing. Now the Dunes are probably not the best place to judge how a car rides on the road and what its road handling is like and ride quality. I suppose out here, First of all, it looks good. Second of all, it's really, really rutted. You wouldn't actually expect sand to be so hard, but I'm sure you can see how it's shaking the cabin around. I will tell you one thing with confidence though, something that Ford gets more right than any other Bucky manufacturer is minimizing the feeling of jiggle between the two chassis, because this is a body on frame car, got a ladder frame chassis with the cab on top essentially. And I was in, the latest Fortuna recently and I was reminded of just how good the Ford actually is because yeah there is a lot of jiggle in the Fortuna and the thing is this isn't an entirely new chassis you would think that it's a revolutionary new ladder frame but actually it's pretty much carried over from the last model which was still very very good with significant tweaks to the strengthening of the chassis and the suspension as well. And so Ford Ranger's ride quality has just gotten better. In fact, overall, I think everything's just gotten better about the Ranger. I think it looks significantly better when you see them parked next to each other. The old one looks quite conservative, a bit demure. This one looks pretty radical actually, but in a good way. Hello again and welcome to the inside of a Ranger Raptor. This is pretty exciting. It's a sports buggy. It's got big 
pops shooting out the back and a massive V6 engine up front with nearly 300 kilowatts. Whose idea was this? This is the most interesting sounding bucky I have ever driven. And I think what we're seeing here is the Americanization of the bucky landscape in South Africa. Now when the previous generation Raptor hit the market, I spent quite a lot of time in it. I even went to Australia to drive it. And I was just pretty much blown away. I mean, it, it just felt like it could do anything at any speed you desired. However, at the time, pretty much universal criticism was laid against the car for having a fairly underpowered two-liter motor. Well, it wasn't an underpowered motor, it just felt like you had the sports bucky and you didn't really have an engine to match. And so Ford seemed to be quite annoyed by that, by everyone saying that their bucky didn't have enough power. And so this one has almost double the power of the outgoing Ranger Raptor double over 290 kilowatts nearly 600 newton meters of torque and of course baja mode which i'm using right now which sharpens up the throttle and the steering so that you can really hammer your sports bucky across the landscape let's just get this out of the way up front there is not a single other bucky you can buy right now that feels like this so what are some of the upsides about having a bucky with this much power and this much engine under the bonnet? Well, a 0 to 100 time that would rival the Golf 8 GTI, so you can do some proper robot to robot racing. It also just sounds bloody fantastic, to be honest with you. It really does. I mean, listen to that V6. <laughs> That's a really good sounding bucky. What are some of the downsides to having the most powerful bucky on the market on your driveway? Well, fuel consumption. Um, yeah, in normal road use on our test, uh, we've been averaging over 16 liters to the 100. Ford says the bucky will do 11.5. I think that's very optimistic. Out here on the dunes, we're getting close to 18 because obviously the engine's working pretty hard to dig through all the sand. So if you do really want to range a Raptor, just, just know that you're going to be making friends with petrol attendants all over the country. Now there's some seriously cool tech in this Ranger Raptor. I mean, it has an anti-lag system. So it's got a system where it will keep in Baja mode and in sport mode, it'll keep the turbo spooled up up to three seconds after you get off the throttle so that if you get back on the throttle, you've got full boost and you don't have to wait for the turbos to spool up again. How cool is that? And then the boost itself is measured and is delivered differently in every single gear. So the boost is tailored for the gear that you're in. Now we've got the 10 speed auto in here and 10 speed autos, in my opinion, were a very bold move from manufacturers. I initially thought they didn't make too much sense, but I must say, after years of fiddling with this, I think Ford have got this one right. It doesn't feel, well, it just always feels like it knows the right gear to be in. Whether you're out here doing this on the dunes or you are on the road. It's difficult for me to convey to you and to put into words how capable this Bucky feels and how much confidence it gives you as a driver. Having this much power under your right foot and having this incredible suspension system, it just makes you feel like a driving god. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> And what is that suspension system? Well, Ford have teamed up with Fox again, who supply the hardware and they tweak it a little bit. It's what's known as a live valve system, but now it has Teflon in the oil so that it rebounds quicker and it's better lubricated. And I heard that a shock, one shock on the previous Ranger Raptor was 27,000 Rand. So yeah, you, 
they're, you don't want them to break. You don't want to have to replace one. I wonder what these cost now. But Ford have spent years tweaking these shocks and that's why you can drive this bucky like this and that's why you can jump it. And that's what makes it so special. So in terms of what's going to hit you in the pockets, what's the difference here between this and the wild track? Well, this is about 1.1 million, just shy of 1.1 million, and that makes it about 140,000 Rand more expensive than the wild track. And having driven them now back to back, this does feel like substantially more bucky than the wild track. As beefy as the wild track is, it just can't hold a candle to 300 kilowatts. Look, you get given a Raptor for a week, you get a permit to shoot on the dunes. You're in one of the only cars that's actually built to jump off the ground on purpose. I actually can't think of another car. You should probably jump it, right? And it's at this point that I'd like to pretend like I'm the super brave motoring journalist or this race ace, this driving god and that I just do this all day. But to be honest with you, this is actually pretty terrifying. Leaving the ground in a two-ton car, heading straight at a dune at 100 k's an hour. 100 k's an hour, that's how fast we have to go to get this thing off the ground. It's scary, it's really scary. So we are filming this in 100 frames a second and I'm pretty sure in post-production we'll slow it down so you can see me myself. Right, Baja mode. That's 50 k's an hour already, 60, 70. I've got to get my speed just right, 80, 90. about 90, 92 maybe. <sighs> now of course the Raptor's interior is based on the other Ranger's interior. They weren't exactly going to design an entirely new dashboard, but it does have some special touches to make you feel better about your special Bucky. So it says Raptor over here. Raptor behind me on the seat. Of course, you have these red accents, which you can see clearly on the air vents and on the steering wheel, on the seats as well. And then there are some flourishes of Alcantara. I've <laughs> been wanting to work that into a script for ages. But some of the touches I really like are less obvious. So for instance, the way the steering wheel is shaped is just about perfect. It's a great sports car steering wheel. And then you've got these big flappy paddles. They're sort of oversized so that they're easier to snatch at when you're on the go. Down here, you've got useful things like a wireless cell phone charger. That's pretty cool. This is a French fry holder. Not kidding. It even has a little logo of French fries in the front there. That's probably one of the most American things I've ever seen on a car. Anyway, down here, probably more important and something you might want to know more about is your drive modes and your 4x4 selector. So that's where you go too high, this new 4 automatic that they have in these new cars, 4 high and 4 low. And then this jog wheel around here spins around and that's how you get to your sport, your normal, your Baja, and you get all these different graphics on the screens when you change your driving mode. Now, one criticism I do have is that this drive mode selector is probably the cheapest feeling thing on this entire car. It just feels so plasticky. And that's obviously quite an important touch point. I'm not sure why they didn't go a bit more hardcore with that just feels like it doesn't really live up to the rest of the car really but generally speaking it is a really impressive interior it's a nice place to be the seats are very comfortable for long distance they also have enough sideways and lateral support so you don't fall out of them when you're hooning your raptor around and i think there is enough here to justify that price tag over the wild track 
Oh, there's also a Bang & Olufsen sound system. Very nice, very loud. Now on the sporty steering wheel, something that the other ranges don't have is of course your drivetrain controls and this cool R button. So the R button is like an M button in a BMW. You can configure the car as you want it, save it as a my mode, and then when you hit that button, you get those pre-selected modes set up to your liking. But you can individually adjust steering, suspension, and the exhaust. The exhaust you can adjust before you start the car. So you've got four options. You've got quiet, so that you don't annoy your neighbors. You've got normal, that's just for sort of pottering around town sport if you want something a little bit more interesting and then for real full-throated straight pipe lacquerness you've got Baja exhaust so let's start it up in Baja mode oh very nice very fruity and then one cool little thing I want to show you about this gear lever. This is an e-shifter, it's shift by wire, not actually connected to your gearbox by mechanical linkage. And if you leave it in drive and then switch the car off, watch what happens. Very fancy. Jumping into the wild track, and this is by no means a plain interior, it's just a bit less exciting than the one in the Raptor. So for instance, you get this much more plain steering wheel, it's still got nice contrast stitching, it's just not as interesting as the Raptor, I suppose. In front of me, the digital display is a little smaller, that's something you might notice straight away. But common to both cars is this big touchscreen. Now, interestingly, in the Amarok, which is the clone of this car, they've ditched the aircon controls entirely. I'm glad Ford didn't do that. I prefer to have a couple of actual physical buttons and knobs to work with. But what I find quite interesting is that there's duplication. So you've got, for instance, a max windscreen button here, and then a max windscreen button there and they both work and if you hit one that one lights up at the same time I'm not sure why it needed to be do off off stop stop blowing things thank you now generally I am pretty impressed with this touchscreen. It feels miles ahead of anything else on the market. It's got some stuff you really need like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is wireless, really nice touch and some stuff you might not need but it's still cool to have and I'm sure your kids will love the sketch pad and you can draw the Cars at Coza logo which I can't do with my left hand and I'm going to run out of space. Look how professional that is. Beautiful. Now something I forgot to mention in the Raptor, which you get in both cars, are these six auxiliary switches up here in the roof. So if you add some accessories to your car, like a KIF light bar or something like that, you can get a dedicated switch for it, which is a nice touch. And I think the overall, the biggest difference in the cabin for me that, that I noticed straight away is the seats. The Raptor seats are really cool. They're really interesting, big sporty bucket seats with integrated headrest. And the seats in here are just a little bit more plain. Two interesting touches are the drinks holders and the door handles. So the Hilux has had this for quite a long time, but the Rangers one is a bit more swish. So you push that, it folds out in front of your air vent so that'll keep your drinks cold. And then the door handle is quite a weird arrangement. It's pretty much hidden away. You reach inside here into the grab handle and you pull it towards you and that releases the door. It's quite a nice flush design I think they've done a decent job with that but it does take some getting used to as you might expect electric mirrors electric windows but as you might not expect some manufacturers don't include it you do get electric seats both passenger and driver The back seats are pretty good, actually. That's my driving position and it's got lots of space. What I find quite interesting is this is pretty much the same vehicle as the Everest. And in the Everest, I was hitting my head on the roof and here I have tons of space. But the backrest is at a good angle. I feel like I could do 
pretty long distances in here. And rear passengers are quite well catered for. You have a 230 volt three point plug with a 400 watt max output, a USB type C and a type A port down there air vents and it looks like there should be drinks holders and an armrest in here but for the life of me i cannot figure out how to get this thing to come down this folds up and you've got your jack and everything done there this folds down but there's no storage space you can just get to the sound system and then there is a proper three-point safety belt for the middle passenger super Now, because you're interested in Bucky's, you probably want me to talk about the Bucky part of the Bucky. And so we have lined up the two next to each other. Now, immediately you can see the height difference. I mean, look at that. That's the Raptor, obviously, on the right and the Wildtrak over there. And that's, of course, because of its fancy suspension and big tires. You can also see the difference in the tail light design. Something that you don't get on the Raptor is this clever little step here, which you get on the Wildtrak and on the other ranges so you can get into the bed. That's quite nice. Both tailgates are sprung loaded, but they don't have gas shocks, which you do get on something like the P series. And I wonder why they don't do that. I wonder if there's a technical reason because those things are actually quite cheap. And if we jump onto the wild track, we do have this optional armadillo, which you can control from in the car or from here. That's quite a nice touch. And then you do get a three-point plug and a 12-volt socket over there on both cars. Now, importantly, with the fancy suspension on the Raptor, it actually makes the payload and the towing worse. So on here, you can carry 985 kilograms. On there, only 652. And here, you can tow 3.5 tons with a brake trailer. And on the Raptor, only 2.5 tons. So this is actually the more practical option. thing is right now if you line up any bucky out there next to this ranger both in terms of interior and exterior aesthetic i think everything looks a bit dated next to this car now of course you're going to have your latest generations coming out from different manufacturers the new triton for instance i think looks really really good but we're probably a few years away from say a new hilux and that is the ranger's key rival and if you're into sort of tech laden cars if you want a more suv like experience from your bucky then i don't think there's anything out there to match the ranger right now so let's chat about some of the new systems that this ranger has on offer so quite a big deal is this new permanent all-wheel drive feature now you can just leave it in all-wheel drive and the car will apportion power front and rear and basically make the best use of the available torque in any tricky situations. You do have a terrain response as well. And you can, of course, put it into two wheel drive. That's not a problem. And of course, full four low. But Ford is quite excited about this new permanent all wheel drive system. You get it in the Raptor as well. And they say that it basically takes a lot of the guesswork out of four by fouring and I suppose inexperienced 4x4s will be very happy to hear that. If you are a bit more experienced, then you can just lock it into 4 high or 4 low and do your own thing. Out here on the dunes, it's felt quite intrusive at times. Sometimes it applies the brakes and you lose a little bit of momentum. But I'm sure if you just fiddle with the modes and fiddle with the drivetrain a bit, you will get the desired result. And I do recommend switching off some of the extensive safety systems that the car has in place, like pre-collision assist, because earlier I was driving at a dune and to go up a steep dune and the car just completely freaked out and thought I was about to have an accident. So you can turn all of that stuff off, but of course you do want all of those safety systems out on the road. And the Ranger is really well specced. If you go into our comparison tool on our site, you'll see how many different safety systems the car has and can be fitted with seven airbags as well, which is really impressive. It is probably, if not 
the safest bucky on South African roads right now. And in terms of sales success, every now and then, you know, they'll pip Toyota at the top and Toyota comes back and it's a real war. It's been a, a real battle for the top of the sales charts and Bucky's a big business in South Africa. And right now you might be sitting there thinking, do I go for the Hilux? Do I go for the Ranger Wild Track? So if we look at the top spec Hilux, that is the Legend RS Auto. The RS stands for Roller Shutter, which is one of my favorite things about the Hilux range. RS sounds so cool, like it that should say really sporty or something like that, but it actually just stands for Roller Shutter. That's with a 2.8 engine, the uprated engine, which now is over 150 kilowatts. And that's a very good engine as well, but quite down on power and torque compared to this V6, although probably a little bit less thirsty. And that car, interestingly, that Bucky is 20,000 Rand more than the Wild Track. So when you consider that this, the top spec Ranger that isn't a Raptor, is 953,000 Rand, when you consider it in isolation, it does sound like a lot of money for a Bucky. But right now, in the market we're in, it is actually spot on. However, there is a caveat with the pricing. Now, a couple of years ago, the South African Competition Commission enacted the right to repair bill, which pretty much everyone completely ignored, except Ford, who actually went ahead and did what the bill said it should do, and they unbundled their service plans. And so it means that that price is excluding the service plan. Your warranty is included in the price for your 120,000 but you do need to buy the service plan and that is an extra 18,000 Rand. And that means that the price is pretty much bang on with the Hilux, almost to the Rand. I was really impressed with the first Raptor and to be honest, I'm even more impressed by this one. It now has the go to match the show which I think a lot of people, if you hesitated in buying the first Raptor, that's probably why. And now that's sorted. So basically they just fixed the power issue and made everything else better and bigger and better looking and up the price a little bit. And here you go, the latest generation Raptor. Very, very difficult to say why you shouldn't buy this car if you're interested in an awesome Bucky. Now, since the new Ranger and the new Ranger Raptor have launched, I've actually been quite amazed at how many I've seen on the roads. And I think that's testament to this Bucky's appeal. I mean, Bucky's are a bit of a status symbol in South Africa. They are pretty important to us as a culture and as a society. And this is the most badass Bucky there is right now. And I think because it's hundred I don't want to say just 140,000 Rand because 140,000 Rand is a lot of money you can almost buy a whole other car but you know if you're up at spending a million and you've got a choice between this and a wild track I mean maybe you just prefer to tell your friends you bought a Raptor I mean you do get some serious bragging rights with this Raptor there are a couple of downsides though because you've got these big knobbly tires your road noise in this isn't as great as it is in a normal wild track. But on the plus side, because you've got the super advanced suspension, the ride out on the road and on gravel roads in particular is really, really good. This car just, just because it's a bit softer and a bit more pliant, it just seems to cope with everything a bit better than a normal Bucky. And then you've got all these little feel good things inside here. You get the special steering wheel, you get these special seats with a nice red trim and it says Raptor there to make you feel better about that 140,000 Rand. But it all sort of adds up to quite a special experience. I, I can't think of another Bucky or even maybe SUV that has sort of given me this sort of feeling. And maybe that's what you're paying for. You're paying for a drive feel that you're just not going to get anywhere else. Or rather a Bucky that makes you feel like no other Bucky can. I 
think something to consider here though is if you're looking for a very practical bucky that can do everything ironically i'm not sure this is it this is pretty much the ultimate lifestyle bucky but think about it this way you've got that reduced tow rating and then if you do tow with this thing if it's already averaging nearly 17 liters to the hundred what is your average going to be when you're towing and i think that that makes this for for some people for most people who want a bucky in their lives that maybe makes this a little bit too specialized and i think your diesel wild track with that big v6 diesel might be the better bet if all you really want is a good bucky but if you want a bucky that can easily match the thrills and excitement of a sports car then there's nothing quite like the raptor cars.coza not only is cars.coza the best place to find your dream car but it's also the easiest place to sell your current car check out the sell car section on our main website simply list your car's details and all of our dealers will take bids on your car you just choose the highest price boom your car's gone on to your next one right thanks very much for watching the video okay uh, i think i'm done yeah i'm finished now God. All our Silos and Archies deserve insurance that pays out.